Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and I'm back with my second update video for Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs with Mac OS Tahoe Beta. Full development has started with the developers on the next version of Open Core Legacy Patcher 3.3.0 for Mac OS Tahoe support. We have a lot to cover. There's so many things going on here. And if you thought I was going to let everybody else have all the fun, no way. Let's jump in and get started. The first major thing that we have to talk about, if you haven't heard already, is that Macola who is the co-developer of Open Core Legacy Patcher with Dina Kay has stepped down from the project. And the reason why is actually good news. It's because he's actually been hired by Apple. And I knew this was going to happen one day because Macola is a very, very smart individual. The way things come to him, technology-wise, you've had to talk to him to understand, first of all, how kind, outgoing, and just overall what a good person he is there's there was just no doubt in my mind that one day he'll be working for apple and i'm again so happy for him and a lot of people are, are thinking what does this do for the the patcher what is, what happens next i sat down and i recorded my thoughts on this and well it ballooned into a 40 minute video and you know how i go when i get on a subject that i i really truly care about i end up going <laughs> <laughs> going on for a full length episode, right? So I, di I just didn't post that because it was just, let me know if that's something you want to hear me talk about. And I, I was thinking about putting together the video, but again, I, I just didn't get it together. But the bottom line is the patcher will continue with Dina Kay in the developer slot. And we've got a nice article that he just posted talking about the development. We'll go over that next. So Dina Kay posted this open core legacy patcher and Mac West Tahoe development in the GitHub, And I'll put a link in the description. So you can take a look at this. Usually McCullough takes this spot and posts a long article about the challenges and what it will take to get the patcher working on older Macs. But Dina Kay has done a wonderful job putting this together. And we can go over some of these things because there's a lot of things going on this year. Um, if you didn't hear and you didn't catch my other video that I talked about the death of Intel, Intel's dead after Mac OS 26. Mac OS 27 will no longer support Intel devices. That carries some heavy weight, right? Uh, we know the death date it is done and it's sad and i put out a whole video about that too that's also going to have some changes inside the operating system that we have to talk about and it's going to cause some challenges for the developers mainly is is that the only max left on the support list are t2 max and some important pieces run through there like audio runs through there ssd access so previously inside the operating system those support items were included for for example 2019 imac that doesn't have a t2 chip for example with beta 2 apple has already removed some of those things they're trying to cut down on the size because the, the operating system in the ipsw has already ballooned to 17.5 gigabytes that's because it includes all of the apple silicon hardware device drivers and all the intel so they're trying to cut down wherever they can so first let's go over what dina k says here another WWDC has passed by, and this time it is bittersweet, as Apple's officially declared Mac OS Tahoe 26 to be the last version to support Intel Max. Nevertheless, Apple has dropped additional Intel Max from the support list, leaving only six models capable of running the last version of Mac OS to support Intel. I went over that list and just hearing that only six models will support, that just kind of sums up. I'm glad they're still there, but man, we are really at the end of the line here. As the OS has been in developer beta now for a few weeks, we've compiled a list of challenges that the patch will need to overcome for this fall. This list will likely expand as we determine more issues with older systems. Let's talk about the drop models. With this release, we have several models dropped with the last T2 less Mac being dropped, and that was the 2019 iMac. Currently, besides T2 issues, the only known limitation for these particular models is audio support for iMac 919, and graphics drivers have not been dropped. Now the T2 challenge, as seen with the MacBook Air models, which is the 2018 and 2019, which were dropped for Sequoia and are still not supported in macOS Sequoia for OpenCore Legacy Patcher. T2 machines still have panic issues when booting with the OS through OpenCore package. Although we have made some progress on this issue, panics are still occurring and there is some significant amount of development work to be done before T2 machines may even get to the install screen. We cannot provide any estimate on when T2 machines will be supported. There's been a lot of talk about estimates, right? Everybody always wants to know when support will be here or not. 
And that's just a human nature thing. You know, you take your car into the auto mechanic. When is my car going to be done? He or she gives the best estimate on when that will be done. They might realize it's a very easy issue and it's done in 15 minutes. Or they might say, oh, shoot, there's some serious damage here and we need three to four hours. Uh, or it might just be in the middle somewhere, too. Most of you listening have that total understanding, right? Like, we know that they're working as hard as they can. Others might get upset, like, hey, why isn't this uh, supported right now? What's going on? We all know. We've talked about this many times. The developers are all over the world, and they're doing this in a best-case scenario where they're working a normal job, then they come home, and they do effort work into the patcher. This is an open-source project for them. No one's doing this full-time. No one's getting paid for it. They're doing it out of the love for Mac OS and unsupported Macs. Like last year, we can talk about Sequoia because it was looking like, and I remember talking to McCall about this, it was going to be late into the year. But sometimes when things fall into, into place, things happen fast. And it did for Sequoia. Some major hurdles were accomplished and Sequoia started to fall into place. And that could happen this year or it could not. We just don't know yet. So let's talk about iMac audio support. With Beta 2, Apple has removed Apple HDA Kex. This is responsible for audio support and all remaining supported Macs route them through T2. Restoring this Kex should solve the problem, but it remains to be tested. Just because it might work on one machine doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work on another model. There is now almost 80 unsupported models that need to be accounted for. So the list is huge. And just because, like I said, it works on one, it might not work for others. And that's why testing is needed. Just because it works on that model doesn't mean it's going to be reliable. It might work and, and everything's working right, but in certain conditions, it might cause problems with different apps or whatever. So that's why the testing needs to be done. That will continue and hopefully we'll have a route here. Again, it's early in beta. We don't know what Apple is going to do. There has been some reports of file vault being turned on automatic with the installation of Tau, leading to issues with volume decryption. And this is another uh, separate GitHub incident that goes over the entire situation here. And you can look over this. There's another casualty of the OS only supporting T2 Max, which handle file vault through the T2. And this should be fixed with APFS EFI from Sequoia. But again, this remains to be tested. Graphic support. With Mac OS Tahoe, Apple has released yet another graphics redesign, Liquid Glass. But the, despite the major design change, Thanks to the hard work of EDU Kavas and a sentient bot, we have some initial but promising results, which shows multiple machines here. We got a MacBook Air 2015. We've got a MacBook Pro. Due to the nature of how non-metal graphics works, support works, the downgrades involved will not allow liquid glass to be supported on these cards. And instead, workarounds for a usable interface will be implemented. This might be fine because a lot of people don't even like the, uh, it's kind of it's kind of split, right? I've seen people say, I don't really like that. Or I've also seen people who really like the new glass interface. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of the glass interface? I'm still out on it. And what I mean by that is like when I look, like some of the icons are a little bit different and some of the, the borders, and the way they look with the light, they look a little bit blurry to me. But when you switch to a dark mode, they actually look pretty good. And some of the interfaces, I don't know, it, it, we'll have to see. It's just early in beta. There's a lot of changes already happening. And if you don't even like it, you can turn on and revert the colors like this on the, on the menu bar if you don't like the clear menu bar. So there's a lot of ways to customize the OS, uh, even if you don't like the liquid glass. General patches needing updates. So far, the following patches have identified as being broke or either partially or entirely. This will require additional work to properly identify these issues and solutions. And we've got some issues here. First of all, wireless, not good. Uh, the T1 chip from 2016, 2017, problematic and USB support. If you watched uh, Greg Rookie Mod's video, you could see that he dealt with a lot of issues, for example, with USB fully not working, audio not working, acceleration. And he even had Michael MJD put out a video talking about his struggles trying to put uh, beta on a 2009 MacBook. People are trying and they're finding out a lot of issues. Now, again, you've heard me talk about uh, warning on trying to get this to run. Remember, the patch doesn't support it right now. Even the Nightly is not supported on installing on an unsupported Macs yet because of all the development working in the background. Hold off, 
don't worry. I know you want to test it. I'm excited too. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm totally excited, right? T to just give it a try and it's fun to try. But again, as I talked about in my video one update, I just don't want something to happen to your system. There's no guarantee that something's not going to go wrong. Just give a little bit of time. They're working and you can follow along in the GitHub with the progress here. And I'll show you the progress here. Jasney has created a rolling list of all the change logs for 3.3.0 or 3.0.0. Restore support for Valve Vault 2. Add USB mappings for Mac OS 26. Increment binaries. We need open core package 1.05. Uh, as, a, as a base support. Progress is being made here, but again, hold off until a workable version or, or beta is released. And even, even then, it's still a beta. The problem is, is that even the operating system is still in beta mode. There's even problems with supported system having problems, like even M1, M2, or M3 Max having problems with Mac OS Tahoe beta. So that gives you a better kind of understanding of what's going on here. Now, there's a big thread going on at insanelymac.com that's talking about everybody jumping in and trying to do different things to get the patch to work. The way open source works is that when you post something on GitHub, you can create what's called a fork. And that basically takes the project and modifies it to do different things that you might need it to do. This user, Mac YYDS, has created a fork called OLCP Mod. And he's just doing these mods on his own. I want to call this out for a couple of reasons because... First of all, you've got a couple of ways to look at this. And what I mean by that is the Open Core Legacy Patrick developers have doing this for almost five years and they are a trusted source. Anyone new that joins, you have to just keep a close eye to see how things go. And, and I don't ever really recommend installing something that you don't know that much about or if you can't read the github code to understand the changes that are being made on the release and i'm not trying to say that he's doing anything nefarious right but anybody that pops up on the scene just give a close look at it. and i don't recommend installing it until either you can read that code because i haven't looked at this but i just wanted to show that there's these things going on and if you hear about it to keep an eye but what i also want to say is that i think it is great that someone is taking something and developing on it. This might be how someone becomes an Opal Core Legacy Patcher developer and can contribute to the project one day. So just because someone's new on the scene and you wanna give it a, a close eye, doesn't mean that this person might become a wonderful developer and they already are with the things that they're doing right now. The Hackintosh community is, is talking about getting Tahoe working on their Hackintosh right now and there's already some successful installs. So that's why I just wanted to, to call out this particular mod here. Again, it's great to see this happening, but keep a close eye on anything that pops up that's not in the main Open Core Legacy patch or Dortania development track. With that said, I couldn't let Greg and Michael have all the fun testing out on uh, supported Max, right? And so I've got macOS Tahoe Beta 1 installed on our Retina 5K 27 inch late 2015. And the fact that it's booting is already great. This is running a build of nightly 3.3.0. And we've got booting, we've got the desktop, it's working, but there's some definite things that are not working. We have no Wi Fi, we do have sound but we don't have any graphics acceleration and we do have ethernet. Some things are there. And the fact that all this is, is working without base patches is already a pretty nice thing, right? But there's definitely some work that's gonna have to go into this before we're getting working here, especially with the USB audio mapping and the Wi-Fi Broadcom setup that, that is causing some problems here. It will be interesting to see where this goes and again i will keep track of all the changes that are happening and i'll be back with another update uh, when we've got something going on let me know in the comments what you think about the development so far and all the changes and things are going on have you tried to install tahoe on your unsupported test mac let me know in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video thanks